Hi and welcome again. So far we have completed the second stage that is the recording and transferring stage of our accounting cycle. In our previous session we compared and reconciled our bank book with the passbook. Now it seems our ledger is complete in all respect. We are ready to move on to the third and final stage of the accounting cycle. Imagine we are a chef who has prepared a variety of dishes for our guests. But they are all kept in different corners of the kitchen, scattered. Our final motive here is to present our plate beautifully to serve our guests. So firstly, for our convenience, we need to put all these prepared dishes which are scattered on one table. We have to bring them together as this will make things so much easier to serve, right? In the same way, whatever we have done up till now, that is up to the journal or subsidiary books, that is like the ingredients of preparing the different dishes. Then the ledger accounts that we prepared is like the scattered food. These ledger accounts have to be communicated to all the parties that are interested in our business. The final statements to be prepared for stakeholders is like serving the guests. This will give them the chance to pick what they would love to eat, which also relates to the different stakeholders being interested in a particular segment of the financial statements, being interested from a different perspective, like the government would be interested in seeing that you've paid the taxes. The banks would want to know the overall health of the business through the statement so that they can make a decision about lending you a loan or say shareholders would like to know where their invested amount is being used or how much return on investments or dividend is going to be distributed and so on. So overall they are all concerned with the profit and loss in the business and the statement of our assets and liabilities to know the financial health of our business. Hence, to meet this need of our guests or stakeholders or all these interested parties, it is important to first arrange all the different ledger balances on one sheet, like arranging the food on the table. So that is why we prepare this trial balance, which is a summarized statement of all the ledger balances. Let's just take a look at these ledgers of Daniel Traders. Now here, this is the cash account. We can see the left side or the debit side total is 12,925 and the credit side total is 8,845. So if the debit is greater than the credit side, we say we have a net debit or a debit balance. Here we have a net debit of 4080. Although the format of our recording is such that we write the closing balance on the credit side just to make the totals equal on both the sides and so that it ensures that there is no calculation error. But this is showing a debit balance. Let's see the next account which is a capital account. This has a net credit or credit balance of 8,000 as the credit side total is greater. Now, can you look at this purchases account and tell me what does this purchase account show? Does it show a net debit or a net credit? It shows net debit because the debit side total is greater and that is by how much? 6330. Now this is very easy. So I think we are all set. Should we proceed to transfer these ledger balances in 
the trial balance. In this case, we will make a monthly trial balance on 30th of April. And we are going to list all our balances in here, the debit balances and the credit balances. Cash showed a debit balance of 4080. Capital credit balance 8000. Purchases debit balance 6330. Sales credit balance 5050. And similarly, we have posted each account's balance. This method that we just used is called as a balance method of preparing trial balance because we are stating the debit balance or the credit balance. But just to provide a complete picture from academics point of view, there is another way we can prepare a trial balance which is called as the gross method wherein directly the totals of debit and credit sides are taken from ledgers to prepare a gross trial balance and then the amounts on the two sides of each account is subtracted to find its net balance. But the balance method is more often used. So this is how we got all our ledger account balances on one sheet like we got all the scattered dishes on one table. It was quite simple, right? Once this trial balance is made, the final balance of debit must be equal to the credit, as we know that every debit has an equal and corresponding credit effect in our records. If the debits are equal to credits, we say that our trial balance has been tallied. We can say this acts as a proof stating that double entry system has been followed in each entry. So we use this trial balance as a checking point. But if at all the totals are not equal, we would know that somewhere we may have not given the correct two equal effects in our records. So this trial balance proves the arithmetic accuracy of the ledger entries prior to preparing the final statements. And it also brings all ledger balances in one place making it easier for a businessman to go through all his accounts just by looking at the trial balance. And if he compares it to another month or year's trial balance, he can see if the balances in a particular account have increased or decreased. And as we know, this trial balance is the starting point in preparing final statements. This is like a huge help. So these are the reasons why a business has to prepare a trial balance. Now just looking at this trial balance we made, can you find anything in common for the different types of accounts that we've seen? All of the real accounts, can you see, are showing a debit balance. And what about nominal accounts? All expenses are showing a debit balance whereas all of the incomes or gains are showing a credit balance and if you see a personal account either could have a debit balance or a credit balance the persons which have a debit balance are our debtors and if you look at all the creditors they have a credit balance well, this remains true in almost all of the cases. Once you understand this, with a little practice, this should be like on the tip of your tongue. So with this, we have completed preparing a trial balance, which is like a self-checking system. But like we would check everything well before serving our guests, we would have to check that our trial balance is 100% true in all aspects. There still may be certain errors that we may notice or you can say some kind of silly errors or human errors 
To know more about these errors and how we rectify them, don't miss our upcoming session on errors and rectification. That is it for today. If you have enjoyed this session, please support us by liking, commenting and subscribing and sharing these sessions with your friends. We will keep trying to make accountancy easy for you. Thank you.